All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. We'll let a couple more uh, people trickle, trickle in, because clearly you all know this is the party room for the end of the day. Yeah, get excited. A few more people coming in. You guys having a good conference so far? Yeah, exciting. New city, new conference. Hopefully lots of good content. Learn, learn some good stuff today. Have your minds blown a little bit? Okay. All right. Um, so before we get started, would love to say thank you to all the sponsors. Obviously, this is our first year in Porto um, with an NDC conference, and that's only possible due to local sponsors and companies getting involved. So make sure to stop by their booths, show them some love, and tell them how much you love NDC Porto and want it again next year. Uh, so because this is the first Porto, I wanted to kind of walk a couple of you through um, how, how to NDC. Uh, so a few things to know. First of all, uh, the speakers are very friendly. Most of us don't bite. Please come up, say hi. We love to talk about you. We want to hear about you and what you're working on and all sorts of things. So if you see a speaker in the hallway, please don't hesitate to approach one of us. We'd love to talk and get to know you. Do be sure to review the session. So as you've been leaving the sessions during the day, you can put the different cards based on how much you like the session in the room. Um, if possible, try and use those cards according to the speaker and not because the kitchen staff next door was banging really loudly and the speaker can't help that. So a couple things about that. Uh, and then is anybody coming to the party tonight? Does anybody know about the party tonight? Okay, all right, so uh, we're gonna have a great time, but you are going to get to experience something called PubCon. Uh, yeah, yeah, a couple people know. Um, so PubConf is a really amazing after party where a couple speakers are going to come up. They're going to give really funny Ignite style talks. I'm using a clicker here. In the talks tonight, the speakers don't have a clicker, meaning the slides are going to auto progress and they have to frantically keep up. So it's a lot of fun. So we hope to see you out tonight. And again, really, it's going to be another great chance to get to know and talk to the speakers, um, you know, pick, pick their brains with questions you came up to today. Uh, we'd really love to see you there. A little bit about me. My name is Jennifer Wadella. You can follow me on Twitter at like OMG It's Fetty. Uh, nine to five, as we say in the States, I'm a, I'm a software engineer. The rest of the time, I am a nonprofit founder and director. Uh, I run a nonprofit back in the States trying to get more women into technology careers. Um, obviously, I'm here. I'm an international speaker, and I'm also a kombucha brewer. Does anybody drink kombucha? Is that a thing here? Uh, <laughs> okay, um, kombucha is a um, fizzy, like fermented probiotic drink. Uh, it's made out of tea that you ferment, and it gets fuzzy, or fizzy, and delicious. And um, it's really low in sugar, so it's a good alternative to drinking a Coke or something like that. And it's good for you. So, uh, I am from Kansas City. If you uh, don't know where that is, it's in the middle of the United States, right here. But what you may know is our most valuable export, Paul Rudd. Excited for the new Avengers. Anybody else? Yeah. All right, so why are we here today? How many of you feel like this on a daily basis? Struggling to keep up. The struggle is real, especially after a conference all day today, right? And you're just like, your brain is melted. You're like, oh, how am I ever going to be smart enough to figure all this out? Well, we're going to talk about how to do that today. Because what we really want to do is look a little bit more like this. Yeah, yeah, we, we want to embrace our inner Wonder Womans and, and smashing the pillars and, uh, and the bad guys. So what is this idea of work-life blank balance? Um, kind of something I came up with because I feel like it really emulates a, um, what a lot of us are trying to focus on and figure out and balance out. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. What does, this, what does this triangle mean and how do we keep it in sync? Your work is obviously, you know, your day job, how you collect a paycheck, how you ensure that your bills are paid. Uh, you're at a developer conference, so I'm hoping you like your job. If you don't, quit and go find a new one. Life is too short to not love what we do. Um, but, you know, this is what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that you need to put a lot of your energy and focus on. So this is going to include things like your job execution, what it actually takes to do your job on a day-to-day -day basis. Upgrading your skills. So that means going out and learning new frameworks, um, getting information, reading books, that kind of thing. Maybe you're a manager. Maybe part of your day is figuring out how to manage and delegate tasks to other people. That's going to take a lot of mental energy um, and emotion from you to balance. Uh, just having meetings and responding to emails and you might have to do some sort of training where you have to fig fill out uh, different skills of whether you can do .NET or whether you can do JavaScript or whether you can do ES6. Um, all these different kind of things and then on the occasional filling out paperwork, uh, dealing with clients, that kind of thing. We get to our life and this is everything you do when you're not at work, right? Um, jumping on the bed, <laughs> who has energy for that? 
Uh, <clears throat> but these are going to be things like household management, making sure that our bills are paid, that we're keeping a roof over our head. Financial planning, um, y'all aren't in the U.S., so you're not incredibly, incredibly fucked like my generation is over there. Uh, so we need to spend a little more time financially planning to making, make sure our futures are safe. Uh, this includes spending time with our family, making sure that our families are fed, they're happy, they're healthy, <clears throat> taking care of our own health, uh, spending more time prioritizing that, getting enough sleep. Anybody get enough sleep in here? Okay, all right. I, I don't hate any of you then because I never feel like I get enough sleep. Uh, having a social life. Who has one of those anymore when you're trying to keep on top of everything? Hobbies? Does anybody have time for hobbies? What madness is this? How can we possibly be good at our jobs and have time for hobbies as technologists? And relaxing? Screw relaxing. We definitely don't have time for that. Okay, so that's our life. And then we have this idea of blank. And this is your passion area. This is the thing that you really, really care about. And this is different than a hobby. A hobby is something you do for fun. Um, your blank is something that drives you to be better and motivates you and you pour a lot of emotional energy and effort into doing this well. Uh, this might be something like volunteering with a nonprofit or maybe mentoring. You might have a blog, you're trying to develop thought leadership. You might be interested in public speaking and trying to figure out how to manage and create talks and things like that. You might have a side hustle where there's some sort of application that you're working on that you think has a lot of really good potential that you're working on. Maybe you manage your nonprofit, not saying I do that or anything, I do. Um, maybe you play a competitive sport and it's something that you really practice at and you train hard at, but again, you're trying to juggle this against your life and against your job. Or maybe you're an open source contributor or you have some project that you're really excited about, you know it's gonna change the face of the internet and that is, that is your jam. Your blank, again, is not a hobby. Your blank is that passion thing that drives you to be better. It's something you enjoy, obviously, but it's something that you um, take feedback for and you're trying to do better and better and better. So when we talk about work-life blank balance, that's, that's the happiness we're trying to achieve, is having a, a full work life, a full um, home life, and a full blank life, something that really it, we're passionate about and inspires us. For instance, my blanks are public speaking, um, last year I did 22 different conferences, about five of them were in different um, countries. This year I've got a, um, about 15 so far. And then I run my nonprofit, Kansas City Women in Technology. Both those things take an immense amount of time out of my schedule, which is why I've spent so much time and energy trying to figure out how do I balance this all and keep myself from crying myself to sleep at night because I'm so damn exhausted I can't even think straight. <clears throat> Uh, so this is a scatter plot, um, kind of rigidly designed, of my life and the different things. And so we've got a couple different um, data points to look at. So this is my idea of how much effort they take. So something that doesn't take a lot of effort is going to be a smaller dot, and something that takes a lot of effort is going to be a bigger dot. And so we'll talk about these kind of things moving on. But um, some of these things in my life might be sleeping. Sleeping is a very small dot. It doesn't take any energy. Um, managing a household crisis, that takes a lot of energy. Um, writing emails every day, not a lot of energy, so not a lot of effort, but it's something I have to do a lot. So we're going to kind of think about that um, in terms of how, uh, how much effort it takes and then how urgent it is and how important it is. And how do I do all this? I'm just kidding. I don't actually have a time turner. Uh, what I do do, what I do have, excuse me, are a couple strategies that I want to share with you all to kind of help you hack your own work-life blank balance. And we're going to talk today about prioritizing. We're going to talk about automating, balancing, finding tools and processes, recompensating, and finally working smarter, not harder. So strategy number one, let's talk about prioritizing. Who knows that feeling? You get up on a Monday morning and you look at your week ahead and there's so much to do and you can't even figure out where to get started. You're just in a blind panic. Everything needs to be done right now. Your email's blowing up. You haven't even opened Slack yet because you know what a shitstorm that is going to be. How do you begin to think about prioritizing everything on your to-do list? So there's this really great quote um, by Dwight Eisenhower. I have two kind of problems, the urgent and the important. The urgent are not important, and the important are never urgent. And so... Uh, there's been this matrix created called the Eisenhower matrix, and this is kind of how we can begin to prioritize and figure out how to assess our lives. So let's stop in the, start in the top quadrant here. So um, along the uh, y-axis, we have important and not important, and on the x-axis, we have urgent, not urgent. So the top left corner is what uh, we need to focus on first. This is both the important and the urgent. This is the quadrant of necessity. These are gonna be things like pressing problems, uh, deadline-driven projects, crises or emergencies, things that are a big deal that need to be handled right now. So these are safe to put your focus on first and get those out of the way when you're starting to plan your week. 
The next quadrant we move to is an important quadrant, but it's not necessarily urgent. And these are things like planning and preparation, taking time to own your calendar and plan out your week and figure out how to make time for things, make time for your family, um, you know, get, get that in order. This is for um, long-term deadline-driven items. Maybe you're working on a book. Maybe there's some feature that you're, you're steadily making progress on. It's not necessarily urgent, but it is an important thing to be working on. Or this might be um, working on yourself. If you're reading a book to help you get better in some area of your life, or doing improvement, or uh, maybe you're reading Marie Kondo's The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, or watching it on a Netflix. Um, again, important, but not necessarily urgent. And so those are, those are things that you can start to plan around and prioritize in your life. Uh, the tricky one, thanks to thanks to our dear friend Slack, and I'm going to rag on Slack a lot. I love Slack, but it uh, it is a problem sometimes. Uh, because this happens with our, our quadrant of deception. These are things that appear to be very urgent, but are not necessarily important. So that random Slack message or random email or somebody has a question or a customer is emailing and it's urgent and they need help right away. Um, but it's not necessarily important. It's not something that's always going to help you achieve your end goal. So it's important to pay attention to things that are happening that have that sense of urgency and figure out if you can push them away until you can have time to get back to them. And finally, we have the quadrant of waste. And these are things that are not urgent, nor they're not important. And this is where we're going to say, you know, using social media, watching TV, watching Reddit. And when you're prioritizing your life, it's true. You don't need to be focusing on these things. But later in this talk, we will talk about how these things are important as a place in your life once you've prioritized all the other things on your plate. Uh, one of the other strategies I like for prioritizing um, is called eating the frog first. Has anybody heard this quote? OK. Um, it's a quote by Mark Twain, and he essentially says, eat a live frog the first thing in the morning, and nothing worse can happen to you the rest of the day. And you're like, why the hell would I eat a live frog? That sounds disgusting. But the idea is, if you do your awful thing first, then that's the worst thing you have to do all day. You get it out of the way, and then you can focus on what you're excited about and what really matters. For me, emails are the bane of my existence. I fucking hate emails. They just kill me. They're necessary, but like, gross. I hate them. So what I do is I block out my first part of the morning, like I'm having my coffee, like my cat's in my lap, my husband's probably still snoring in the next room, um, and that's my quiet time to eat my frog. I answer my emails, I get it out of the way, and then any other emails that I don't have to deal with right away get snoozed until I can deal with them the next morning. I eat my frog first, and then I have a much happier rest of my day. Okay, and so you're thinking, all right, Jennifer, this is great. Like, if I can prioritize everything and put it in boxes and figure out what to do then, like, that's fine. But what, I'm a very creative person. Um, I identify with Kanye West very strongly. Like, you can't stop my creativity. What do I do then when I just need to have my creative flow? Um, this is another little trick that comes in when you need to have a way to document creative thoughts as a placeholder. Uh, if you're a blogger, if you're a person who's creating talks or something that requires a lot of creative energy, sometimes you'll be solving a problem or sometimes you'll be in the shower and you'll be like, oh, that is brilliant. Have a resource for yourself that you can duck aside to really quick and make a note of that so you can get back to it when you're ready to. Uh, and the other thing to consider when we are prioritizing our lives and perfectly scheduling everything and blocking off time in our calendars um, is a little thing called Murphy's Law. And, and Murphy's Law is what can go wrong will go wrong. Um, I remember I was giving a talk one time in the middle of the summer, and I get home, and I'm like, damn, it's really hot in here. I had a million other things to do that weekend, and our AC unit has gone out. So no matter how perfectly you plan, your AC will go out. A pipe will burst in your house. Your kid will get sick and need to be picked up from school. Some sort of chaos will happen. If you are aware of that, you can learn to deal with it a lot better versus it kind of throwing a wrench in your entire life. So be aware for all your perfect prioritizing. Something will come through and blow it to shit. All right, so if we look at my uh, little scatter plot again, we, we've got kind of a, a realignment going on here. This was what would happen if my AC unit goes out in the middle of summer, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to die. My pets are going to die. Everything is awful. All of a sudden, I've got this big effort that shifts up and kind of takes priority all over everything else. We've got a nice little visual. And so this is important to remember to give yourself a little, little bit of a break because shit happens. And, and that's just that's life. That's humanity. That's how it goes. But also be considerate of those other people in your life, of members on your team, because shit happens to them too. And if we can all be aware of that and help out each other a little bit more, I think we'll be a bit more productive.
Okay, so let's talk about automating. And this one should be fun because I feel like as, as technologists and engineers, this is pretty second nature to us. But this is uh, basically like applying DevOps in, in real life. <clears throat> Auto pay. Uh, one of the biggest things that we need to worry about is making sure that we have our bills paid so a nice little creditor doesn't come to our door and try and take our house or something like that. So um, if you can set up uh, get rid of the need to remember dates and times and things for bills. Um, auto pay is a really great way to help you. This is something that we can do to no longer have to focus on things that we can automate in our life so we can spend our energy elsewhere. Auto pay. Auto communicate. Uh, so again, I, I told you all I hate emails. Emails suck. They're awful. Uh, so there are a lot of tips and tricks I've done to help auto auto <clears throat> automate my communication or auto communicate. Uh, you can create canned responses in Gmail. So just like you would refactor your code to maybe um, <clears throat> abstract it a little bit more, you can do the same thing for your emails. You're answering the same email every so often, go ahead and document that. Put it in a canned template, and then you can just click a button to send, and you're along your merry way doing what you actually want to deal with instead of answering emails. Uh, if you are a terrible speller or um, grammar person like I can be on occasion, there's a really handy extension called Grammarly that you can install across multiple browsers and it will check your work for you. And you will not look like a dumbass when you hit the send button and then look at your email and go, oh no, I sent that and there's a spelling error and I am mortified. So use tools like this to help yourself auto-communicate. Do you know you can set reminders for Slack notifications? Yeah, get rid of that little red dot for a couple hours while you get your focus on, then it can come back. Use snoozes and reminders. Uh, you can also create to-dos for yourself and your team in Slack. Uh, I know it's really easy to be having some sort of conversation or idea flow and really great ideas, but those mean nothing if you're not ready in, um, to set up and execute on them. So go ahead and create to-dos inside Slack, and there's a link, and um, these slides will be available after the presentation. Uh, but use that as a tool to make sure you and your team are as efficient as possible. And for everything else, there's If This Then That, Email Pet, and Zapier. These are all different tools that you can use to integrate basically any possible platform in your life to kind of help automate these different responses so again, you're not having to waste your time and energy dealing with them. Auto market yourself. Uh, a lot of what we do in technology is a lot around thought leadership and sometimes that means creating a brand or that kind of thing. So if you're looking to get into speaking or blogging or something like that, um, spend the time to craft a really good bio. This can also be really helpful for updating your LinkedIn page or um, if you're speaking at a, at a company event or something like that. And if you can just have a ready-made bio, um, a biography about yourself ready to go, spend the time now to create that and just have it ready to go. Because every time I used to sit down and I'd be like, oh crap, how do I describe myself now? What have I done in the past two years of my life that's worth talking about? I have one really solid bio and as cool things happen, like pop cough winning PubCon, um, I'll add those to my bio and then get a headshot that you really, really love. Spend the time, spend the money, spend the energy. A lot of conferences have actually started offering um, photographers to do headshots at conferences, so look out for things like that. Uh, use social media tools to manage your content. If you are trying to curate some sort of thought leadership, you can use um, all sorts of automated Twitter platforms to push out that content so you don't have to think about it. Um, I'm kind of an asshole on Twitter. I mostly just like tweet when I'm drunk and I think something's funny. But if I actually cared, I would use some sort of manager tool to push out thoughtful content. Uh, you can also set up Google Alerts for your name and your company. So if you've got maybe a cool project and you want to know if people are writing about it or something like that instead of scouring the internet, Google Alerts actually work really, really well and you will get an email notification anytime that your name or whatever term you plug in gets hit. Auto domesticate. Here is a fun one because who likes cleaning? Uh, look into cleaning services. You will save so much time in your life. Uh, you can spend a little bit of money to have somebody help clean your house and you'll get hours and hours and hours of your time back to do what you really love. Outsource lawn care projects if you have a lawn. I've got a tiny lawn and I don't want to do anything with it so I'm pay somebody to mow it and it's awesome. Uh, clean up as you go. Again, I'm going to make a joke about the life-changing magic of tidying up. Have, have, has anyone heard of that? It's on Netflix. It's, it's delightful. She will change your life. Um, but clean as you go and, and try and keep a, a clean... Uh, home and it won't pile up and you won't like get to the Tuesday night and you've got a million things to do and you've got emails to answer and you want to get work done in your open source project and there's a pile of dishes and you're like, oh, I have to deal with this too. So if you clean as you go, you can help um, automate and optimize that. Uh, you can try a meal prep service. Uh, these are really, really great because they'll mail you kits of food and they normally take under 30 minutes to assemble. Uh, so if you're not a big cook or you're somebody trying to eat healthy, this can, these can be a really, really great way to go. 
And finally, get monotonous items that you know you're always going to need shipped to you. Uh, we have uh, toilet paper via Amazon Prime, which is a service we use in the U.S., uh, to get toilet paper shipped to us. So there's never like that panic when one of us is in the bathroom and we're like, did you buy toilet paper? No, I've been busy. Did you buy toilet paper? No. And crisis. So you're always going to need toilet paper. You're going to need things like garbage bags. Uh, we need dog food. We need cat litter. All these things can be automated and shipped to you so you never have to worry about it or make some panic run to the store when you have a million other things going on. So if we begin to look at automating our life and figuring out how much time that will save us, you can kind of see my dots and the efforts expanding, but a little bit better representation might be like this. It's kind of cut off. But um, after automating all my life tasks, I get that much time back to spend on my job and whatever my blank is. So here's the thing. Spend your time and energy on the big ideas and solving the big problems. Automate everything you don't need to be thinking about in your life so it doesn't have to take any emotional energy from you. Find all those redundancies in your life and find ways to minimize them. Here's the truth, y'all. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. That's all it is. And so the better we can learn to automate and manage our time, the more successful we're gonna be. Except for Jerry. Jerry doesn't have any more time. He's in our bellies. If you missed the keynote, I'm sorry. Like, it's too long to explain. Uh, okay. Strategy number three, find balance. Uh, there's this really cool equation. I don't know if anybody's into fitness or working out, but that equation is stress plus rest equals growth. And that's actually how we make muscles grow. When we're really straining and tearing our muscles and then rest, that's where the growth happens for our muscles to expand. Funny how much this applies to the rest of our life. Um, here, here's another little quadrant for you that I like to talk about because I feel as, de as developers, um, we go through this cycle. And uh, this is called the cycle of competence. And we're going to start off in the bottom right this time. This is unconscious incompetence, and this is what you, um, you don't know what you don't know. And so a conference is a really great time to deal with this problem. You may have seen talk titles, and you didn't know that technology existed. Now you can go figure it out. Um, this is kind of the place where you just have no idea what information is out there. You don't even know what to Google for to figure out how to solve your problem. And so this is the time for discovering new things. When you've discovered this thing that you want to begin to explore and dig into, you move into conscious incompetence. You know more about it, but you know exactly what you don't know. Um, so this is when you want to spend your time really learning and really putting effort into um, building those skills. Once you've kind of figured that out a little bit more, you come into conscious competence. You know exactly what you know, but it takes a little bit more time and effort to do it. So this is where you're really going to be wanting to apply practice to that knowledge. And finally, you're going to move into the quadrant of unconscious competence. And this is where you don't know what you know, meaning you've become such an expert at something, you forgot how hard it used to be. Although I can still remember, I'm a JavaScript developer, right? And learning the concept of this was like, ah, right? And now it's just like, I know exactly what that is, and it's not a big deal. I'm, I'm unconsciously competent about it. But um, I remember that struggle. And so it's helpful to think about this cycle for yourself as you learn and grow so you're not too hard on yourself, but also um, to be aware of it on, with your team members. What cycle are they in in the cycle of competence? And you can kind of gauge and better help them. Uh, a little more, more research is linked um, below this talking about stress plus rest equals growth um, if you're interested there. All right, get enough sleep. This is a big one because this is actually when your body recovers. Uh, I know this because I was in high school playing video games until like 3 o'clock in the morning and then getting up at like 6 a.m. for marching man and I gave myself mono because I just completely uh, degraded my immune system to the point that my body like took a case of strep throat and turned it into something worse. It's true, it happens. So make sure you're getting enough sleep to let your body recover. Uh, this actually aids in hunger management. Your body kind of, you know, shuts down overnight so you're not overeating when you shouldn't be. Uh, this is also how memory is created. Memory is actually really firmly created during our, our sleep. <clears throat> Uh, how to get enough sleep is a different story. I can tell you to get more sleep all day long, but it is a struggle. Uh, a couple things that I've done, uh, using a fitness monitor to mo or a fitness tracker to monitor your sleep will help you get a better picture of when you're restful, when you're asleep, that kind of thing, and you can begin to track your progress. Um, obviously, avoid stimulants and lights before bed. I know you're like sitting in there on your phone, scrolling through Reddit, scrolling through Instagram, through, scrolling through Twitter. Stop it. I promise it'll help. Put it away. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, if you really need help falling asleep, like maybe you've got something you're rattling around in your head, it's something you're really, really mulling on, uh, it can be really helpful to have like audiobooks or apps or music. For me personally, I like to put on an audiobook I've heard a million times. I'm not going to be surprised by anything in the plot because I know exactly what's going to happen, but it gives me words to focus on as I fall asleep so I'm not thinking about the million things I have to do tomorrow and can get really restful sleep. Right? Good, good, good lead in. Okay, so um, know your productive hours. How many morning people do I have? Got a couple, everybody else night people? Everybody else whenever the hell I wanna wake up? Yeah. Uh, it's really important to know your productive hours. And this is hard because as humans, we've kind of forced ourselves into this box of working a certain hours a day, but we're not all built to do that, right? So if you can be aware of your productive hours and know when your brain is gonna be firing best, you can kind of push your harder work to that time. Like I know I've got this really sweet spot, like morning to mid morning that I get a lot of good work done. So I put all my really hard things that I need to get done during that window. Um, again, the number of hours in a day is not the issue here. It's the number of hours during which we feel and can be productive. So if you can optimize for that, you're going to be a lot happier. <clears throat> uh, this is the time where I harp on health and fitness. Uh, because if you think about it, if you're working out one hour a day, that is only 4% of your day. And it is going to do so much for you. Uh, prioritizing your health is a huge deal. Uh, this is a brain on the right side. We have a brain after just sitting quietly because meditating is good. Uh, but the brain on the, well, I guess that's, you're right. Okay, the brain on the right is after just a 20 minute walk. Nothing strenuous, but just a walk. That much activity has been stimulated in our brain just by getting up and moving around. Um, I really like going to the gym and I get on the treadmill because it's a really good way to get away from the keyboard, right? And since I'm not sitting there typing away, I can really start to think about and abstract problems and it's really, really great. Um, so if you can make the effort to get out and walk, do something to um, do, do better for your body, it will help your brain. Our brains are the biggest part of our job, right? We, it's, it's our most performant tool. Why would we not do everything in our power to make our brains more performant? <clears throat> Learn to say no. And here's where we're going to get into some, some hard, tricky stuff. Uh, but there are so many amazing things in this world, and there are so many amazing things you may want to do, but you cannot do them all. Um, this is a dance called West Coast Swing that I love dearly, and I used to compete in it, and it was so much fun, and it brought me so much joy. But there are so many other things in my life that I had to learn to say no to this because I could no longer prioritize it and excel as well at everything else that I cared about just a little bit more than this. I might come back to it someday, but it is okay to say no and, and figure out how to better prioritize your life. Uh, you can also say no to people. You can say no to toxic relationships or people that um, simply detract from your life. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, do not set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. And you may have dealt with that person in your life that they just take and take and take so much from you and you just feel exhausted after every time you deal with them. All you owe them is to be a decent, kind human being. Like if they're on fire, hopefully put them out. But other than that, you do not owe anyone any of your emotional energy in that capacity. So it is okay to not have toxic people in your life that are just sucking your energy negatively from you. Uh, leaders do not take that and say, oh, well, I can just do anything I want now. That's a whole different conversation. This is just personal relationships. Turn off push notifications. Uh, this is such a hard thing to do, I feel, because we think if we're not always connected and we don't know what's going on, some sort of crisis is going to happen. Unless you're on call, turn off your fucking push notifications. Let somebody else deal with it. Take your weekends. Take your time with your family. Do it uninterrupted. Give yourself a break from all of that drama. It's going to be okay. I promise. Um, if you need a little like intro into it, there's a game where if you're at a dinner and everybody's looking at your phone, you have everybody put their phones face down on the table. First one to go for their phone when it vibrates has to buy everybody around drinks. Yeah. Uh, get off social media. And uh, I, I like this picture because I feel like this is what social media does to a lot of us, right? Like we're following somebody and we're like, oh man, I'm never going to be as smart and security as Troy Hunt. I'm just going to feel terrible about myself. Uh, and that's really, really harmful. If you're too busy watching other people on social media and focusing on the things they're doing, you're not going to focus on the amazing, unique strengths you can bring to the world. And you are depriving us of your awesomeness just by spending too much time focusing on somebody else. So don't do it. 
Okay, so one of the hardest things we deal with as people is dealing with criticism. And uh, this goes back to a prehistoric time because criticism uh, a lot of time can feel like rejection. And when humans grew in packs, if you were rejected from the pack, you would die alone. You could not survive without this group. And so it's in our biology to fear this kind of rejection, right? And that comes hand in hand with criticism. We take criticism as you know, a precursor to rejection that we're not good enough, we're gonna get kicked out of the herd, and you're gonna be the loser who uh, is not allowed to sit at the table with everybody else. Um, so it's important to understand how criticism affects it, but also understand that you need criticism to learn and grow. You are not psychic, you are not on omnipotent. And so criticism is a really great way to learn to figure out how to deal with that. And I do like this quote a lot. It's take criticism seriously, but not personally. If there is truth or merit to the criticism, learn from it. Otherwise, let it roll right off you. Uh, because sometimes people are just in a bad mood. And it might not be about you anyway. But if you can take criticism and figure out if there's something you can learn from and improve on, take that. Otherwise, let it go. <clears throat> Give yourself a break. Uh, there's this whole like trend of self-care, right? Hashtag self-care. It's bubble baths and chocolate and ice cream. Uh, and that's not what self-care really is. Uh, I love this quote. Self-care is not salt baths and chocolate cake it is making a choice to build the life you don't regularly need to escape from if you have a life where you are looking forward to the weekend all the time because you hate your job so much or you are so stressed out you are looking forward to that week-long vacation where you can completely disconnect you might be doing it wrong. If you can think consciously about building a life that you enjoy and having a routine that does not crush you oppressively like that, you will be a much happier person. Uh, for me, I really prioritize like playing video games a couple hours a night at week. Like I, I sit down, my husband and I play Destiny 2, like I have a glass of bourbon, and that's my nice little chunk of self-care. It's, uh, it's routine, it's something I make sure to prioritize in my life to, so I don't get to the point of feeling burnt out where I need to just escape from my entire life. <clears throat> Uh, this includes identifying and minimizing stressors. Uh, if you've never seen the airplane movie, that's what this is from, where he unplugs the runway lights. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. But I hate traveling. It stresses me out so fucking bad. So there are some things I learned to do and optimize. Uh, in the US, I have um, <clears throat> TSA pre-check, which means I don't have to take off my shoes, I don't have to take off my laptop, or take out my laptop, I can go through an expedited lane. I get to the airport freakishly early, so I don't have to panic about missing my flight. Um, and then I fly in Europe and they're like, you fucking type A Americans are like at the gate two hours early. What is wrong with you? And I'm like, I'm not going to miss the flight. Don't judge me. Um, but that is one thing that I can do because I know travel stresses me out immensely. So anything I can figure out to focus on and remove, uh, keeps me a lot healthier emotionally. All right. Strategy four, using tools and processes. Uh, joke, hacking your work-life blank balance is a process. So, uh, a lot of what I've been talking about today is what works for me. But the idea for you to take away from this talk is what works for you. Start to think about pieces of your life and how you can apply different processes to them to help optimize so you can spend more time doing the things you're truly passionate about. Uh, I use Trello for everything. Uh, Trello is a big deal for me because, again, I have a million thoughts all the time and I can dump them somewhere. So if I'm in the middle of something else, have a creative thought for a talk, I can dump it in my Trello board. If I'm out at dinner having a conversation about a, uh, with a friend about an upcoming trip and they recommend a place, I can dump it in my Trello board. That is a system that works for me. Find a system that works for you. <clears throat> Calendar hacks, because we all have calendars uh, to try and keep our life in order. Um, if it exists, and if it's something you're going to do, block it off on your calendar immediately. Um, this will keep you from missing meetings. This will keep you from being the asshole that misses meetings. And it'll also kind of help you maintain your sanity. Uh, physically block out work hours for yourself. If you know you're working on a deadline or you have to get something done, put that on your calendar. Not only will you see it and get that mental boost from it, your coworker will see it and not schedule you for a meeting because they assume you're busy. It'll be fun, I promise. Uh, share calendars between family members. Uh, I travel a lot internationally, and so it's really, really nice to be able to share my calendar with my husband so he knows where in the world I am or when he needs to pick me up from the airport. Um, so that's something that we can do instead of having to text message back and forth uh, what's going on. We just share our calendars and, and stay in sync that way. Uh, use reminders and to-dos. Again, if there's something coming up, you've got a deadline, make sure that's in your calendar. Make sure there's some way it's going to notify you. Uh, and one thing I do is I block off weeks around travel because travel is unpredictable and I know something could go wrong. So I will block off some time for myself so people can't schedule me for meetings. Speaking of scheduling me for meetings, has anybody heard of Calendly? This is the best thing in the world, y'all. 
uh, this will save you all that drama of going back and forth trying to schedule a meeting. Because uh, I'm sure you've done that before where so-and-so is like, hey, I want to meet you for coffee. And you're like, okay, great. What day works for you? And they're like, this day. And you're like, oh, that day doesn't work for me. And they're like, what about this day, this time? And you're like, no, but this day, this time. Fuck those emails. Use Calendly. Uh, what this is, <laughs> is a scheduling session. And so I have this set up. This is a public link where people can go in and schedule me. And so I've got a couple different options here. I, somebody can book me for a 30-minute coffee meeting. Um, and it syncs in with my calendar. So I'm out of town right now. So it's not going to let anybody book anything with me. Um, I'm not back until, uh, until that week of March. Uh, but you can click in and then you can book a time that works. And I've got a couple questions populated here. Um, where it's what are we going to be discussing and then I've got a list of preset locations and I'm like okay these are one of the places that I can meet you at to discuss this has saved me so many hours of my life it is the best tool in the world my nonprofit leadership team if they want to meet with me they just go to my Calendly link um, I've got women who are trying to break into the speaking industry they can book a mentoring spot with me and get a hold of my calendar that way so it's a really really useful tool that saves me a lot of time and anything that ha lets me send less emails makes me very very happy so <clears throat> Uh, one of the other things you can do is you can actually get an accountability buddy if you are trying to do something and you just need a little bit more motivation. Um, find a friend to go to the gym with. Find a blogging partner. That can be a lot of fun. Find somebody with shared interests. Uh, if you don't have any friends, I'm sorry. Maybe I'll be your friend. Uh, you can actually create your own accountability accountability buddy in Slack. And so this is a little Slack bot you can create for yourself that'll be like, hey, did you work on that thing that we talked about working on? Um, so there's an if this and that recipe down there. Okay, a couple of email hacks, because again, email sucks. Uh, there's a snooze feature in Gmail that is the best invention possibly ever, and I'm still really salty that uh, Google has killed off Inbox. Um, if you haven't heard, it's happening in March, and I'm bitter. Um, Mixmax is an email tracking automation and templating tool. So again, if you're trying to get a little bit more um, power out of your email and um, automating it, you can use Mixmax to see when people have actually opened your emails. They've got a free tier this is, that's really good. Um, Boomerang is a similar service that you can look into using. And uh, just a random one, one roll me will actually start to go and unsubscribe from shit you don't care about anymore because like your grandma signed you up for this email spam list and you've never gotten off of it. Uh, you can use those different things to make sure that only the important emails are getting through to you. <clears throat> couple of my email hacks. If you want a response, always end with a call to action and a deadline. It's the only way you're going to get responses from people. And if you don't get responses, then you can call them out for it. Because you're like, I told you to do this by this day, and they have no excuse. Um, but that is one of the best ways you can make sure that you are getting the most out of your time. Because if you're doing everything to optimize this and nobody's responding to you, then that's not helpful. So here's a way to optimize that. Uh, format your dates to be easy to remember. I like to include the actual physical day of the week, date, and time zone because I travel so much. So I can be very, very explicit because the more, the less time I have to spend going back and forth to confirm communication between somebody is more time I get back in my life for something I care about. And finally, make your emails easy to read. Use lists, call out important information. Just don't word vomit paragraphs of people because, again, you're going to waste their time, and then they're going to have questions coming back for you. Anything we can do to automate and better communicate is going to give us more time back in our lives. It's going to take a little bit more effort up front, but it will be worth it in the end. Does anybody meal prep? couple people. Okay, I, I love meal prepping. I, I'm a freak about it. Um, but meal prepping is great because it's this idea of like getting all your week's meals ready and then you just heat it up in the microwave or whatever. And so this is a huge time saver. Uh, another cool thing is it removes decision making or willpower because you're not like, oh, what do I want to eat today? I don't know what I want to eat today. And it's three hours later and you're starving and hating the world. Uh, if you've already got the food made, you don't have to make that decision or you don't have to say, oh, well, I should stick to my diet. But Great way to save money. Uh, very easy for portion control if you are somebody who is concerned about weight and health. Uh, better nutrition and great for calorie tracking. Um, there's a really great article here on why you should be meal prepping and planning your meals. Uh, but as far as my meal preps go, um, does anybody have an Instant Pot? Love my Instant Pot. Those who know of the cult of the Instant Pot get it. Um, but an Instant Pot is a pressure cooker, and I can do like an entire pot roast in 45 minutes, and it's just golden and, and flaky and falls apart, and it's delicious. So time saver there. 
Uh, you can calcul calculate your macros ahead of time if you're a fitness geek that plays into that. Um, and it's really easy to dump recipes that you create into MyFitnessPal or some sort of health tracking tool um, for easy calorie tracking. Uh, you can also freeze meals for when you travel. Um, when I'm gone for three weeks at a time in Europe, I make sure my hus husband doesn't starve by uh, preparing him EFBs, emergency freezer burritos. And so these are something that, you know, we've, we've got in the freezer that he can just pull out. Or um, if I've been traveling and I get in late and my flights are messed up and I'm starving because I love food, I can pull one of those out and, and good to go. So do anything you can to um, solve problems. For me, again, this is my process. I am hangry all the time. Like I prioritize making sure myself is fed so often because I get super bitchy if I'm hungry. So a little way I've automated my life. And finally, if you're on Reddit, you can subscribe to our meal prep Sunday. A lot of great ideas for getting started meal prepping there and, and saving yourself some time. Let's talk about errand hacks because errand, running errands suck. Um, avoiding busy times can save you a lot of time so you're not waiting in line and, and things like that. Uh, this is a pro hack from my mom. If you can optimize your errand running during when most parents are dealing with getting their kids to and from school, the lines will be much, much shorter. So lock that one away for any time you need to go to the grocery store. Or if, if you're an American and you just buy on everything off of Amazon and you never leave your house, you don't have to worry about that. But um, other places are not like that. Uh, use order ahead and pick up services whenever you're available. A lot of grocery stores have started to allow you to go ahead and say, OK, I need all these things on my list and just deliver them to you. So you're not wandering up and down every aisle trying to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> OK, train your brain to go into focus mode. And so we talked about prioritizing earlier and figuring out what and when we need to work on. But just because you know you need to work on something doesn't mean your brain is ready to work on something. Um, so some of the things we can do are really train ourselves to get into that focus mode to really get work done. Um, music is a really, really great way to do this. Uh, they've actually looked at the fact that um, video game music is really, really good for focusing. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Because as a video game, you're trying to progress through levels. They don't want the music to be too distracting. They want it to complement whatever you're doing. And so uh, video game soundtracks can be really, really, really good music to just get your focus on against. The only thing I warn you against is don't pick a video game that you have really bad nostalgia for. Like this article talks about Donkey Kong 64 and I started listening to the soundtrack and then I got drunk on Amazon and bought Donkey Kong 64 and then spent the weekend playing that instead of whatever I was supposed to do. So um, go for a video game that's not gonna do that for you. Uh, if you need a little bit more help removing distractions to make sure you stay focused, there are a whole bunch of really great tools here. The one I use most often is Momentum because I feel like my really big struggle is like I'll be waiting on my code to compile and I just absentmindedly pull up a new browser tab and I go to Twitter and I browse Twitter and then where are 15 minutes of my life gone? Uh, so Momentum is really nice. It is just anytime I open a new tab, it, it puts up this nice serene photo and it's like, hey Jennifer, what are you working on? I'm like, thanks Momentum, I'm going to get back to the shit I'm supposed to be doing and not browsing Twitter. So that's something that works really well for me. There are a couple other cool ones on here. Um, Forest is really fun. It's a little extension that you click um, and it'll pop up in your browser, browser and it's like a Pomodoro timer except you're uh, growing a tree. And if you navigate to a website you're not supposed to, you kill your tree. Do you want to kill your tree? No? Okay, don't kill your tree. So uh, if you need that help, you can use Forest. And finally, Stay Focused is like a really hardcore blocker. You can go through and blacklist sites, and it physically will not allow you to access those sites within your browser. So if you know you're not quite mentally strong enough to keep a tree alive, you can resort to using that one. <clears throat> Uh, one of the things that really helps me as well, especially in the very digital world that we live in, is to physically write things down. Because I know when I've got a million things going on and I'm really starting to get stressed out, there's something very therapeutic and cathartic about taking a pen to paper and simply writing out my to-do list. And so I'll always have some sort of little notepad around that I can kind of prioritize. I need to do this on Monday. I need to do this on Tuesday. And it's just an extra little thing I figured out for myself that can really help relieve stress. And again, it's not that different from putting it in Trello like I normally do, but for some reason, that tactile action really helps me. So begin playing with things and figuring out what works for you. Um, and clearing your office and your desktop uh, can actually be really, really helpful. Uh, you know, we are really kind of like Sims with our little green diamonds above our head, and when your office is messy, that green diamond goes away, and you're not as productive. Uh, so try keeping things clean. Uh, strategy number five, recompensate. <clears throat> this word means to pay or, or give restitution for. And so I like to talk about this because we've talked about all these optimizing and automating and prioritizing, so we can go, 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 go. But the problem is, if we go, go, go all the time, 
we're going to break down. We're going to burn out. And so that's why this is really important. Um, work weeks, at least in the US, have been way above 40 hours for a long time. Like in the development world, it's not uncommon to joke about a 60 hour work week. And that's not healthy. Like we've created this insane burnout culture. And so we need to understand how much energy that is taking from us and making sure we're paying ourselves back for all the fun stuff, for all the hard work we do. So that's where getting a hobby comes into play. This is something that you do purely because it makes you happy, not because you're trying to do something better or anything like that. Something that you can just chill out and relax and focus on. For me, that's video games. If I'm really, really stressed about work, it's amazing how much just like pulling my focus for two hours a night to go do something else really helps reset me and get me excited to get to work the next morning. Um, so definitely have a hobby. Have something that you can do outside of work, outside of your passion, that you can just do simply for bliss. If you haven't tried knitting, you should try it. A lot of developers surprisingly really enjoy it, and it's not just a girl thing. Next, have guilty pleasures. And don't feel guilty about them. I watched this trashy, trashy reality TV show uh, called The Bachelor. Uh, where like, you know, there's Bachelor and then there's 20 women trying to date him and there's drama and there's cattiness and there's bitchiness and the guy is like boring as fuck and you're like, why are you all fighting over him? Um, but anyway, it's like, it's just trashy. It's pure trash, but that's my guilty pleasure. It's my thing. And I don't feel bad about it. And I don't let anybody feel bad about it because I work my fucking ass off. I deserve to watch some tra trashy, trashy reality TV show every once in a while. Uh, plan things that you look forward to. Uh, we want to be automating our life and, and figuring things out so we don't feel like we need to take a vacation. But sometimes it's really helpful to have something you're excited to to look forward to on the horizon. Um, I, I work a lot. Um, I do conferences a lot. That's not necessarily relaxing our vacation. So uh, last year, a couple of girlfriends and I uh, booked conference tickets to RuPaul's Drag Con, um, which again, another reality show about drag queens. It's fantastic. And we just had a weekend in LA and we went to Drag Con and we got dressed up. We wore wigs and fake eyelashes and we went out for cocktails. And it was just this great trip. And so anytime I was stressed out about work, I could just ping my girlfriend and be like, hey, did you pick out your wig color yet? What's going on? So it's really important to have things that you're looking forward to on the horizon. In. Um, that also includes maybe scheduling your social life. Um, I feel like this is something we really struggle with adult, as adults, and especially as you're running around with kids, you're too worried on their, worried about their friends and not about your friends. But making sure that you're taking time to connect with humans that maybe you, you know need to see outside of 40 hours a week in an office is really important. For introverts, this might mean scheduling more meaningful one-on-one -on -one conversations. I really like to catch up with like one girlfriend that I have at a time, and we'll go out for cocktails. It's like 4 to 6 p.m., and we'll just chat and catch up on life and have really good one-on-one -on -one conversations. I'm a big introvert. That's what I prefer. Uh, extroverts, this might mean you know going to parties, getting involved with recreational sports, doing group outings, organizing a thing to go to an escape room. Um, but it's okay to schedule these things and make sure that you're prioritizing your relationships with people outside, you know, the ones you're reviewing pull requests for. <clears throat> Take your birthday off. Um, this might not be as big of a deal outside of America where we like work just way too much, but it's okay to celebrate your awesome ass self and take a birthday off. Go to the spa, go do something fun, go do something you normally wouldn't do, but celebrate you, celebrate you being awesome because you deserve it. In the last strategy, because I think this is an important mentality shift that a lot of people miss, um, is working smarter and not harder. And I hope most people are familiar with this phrase. Uh, I learned this phrase very, very early in my life, which I'm grateful for. Um, I was in marching band in high school, and it was, it was my passion. It was that thing I loved. It was my place of belonging. And I worked my ass off. I was the first one there in the morning. I was always helping tear down equipment and that kind of thing. And uh, when, when time rolled around to um, audition for drum major, which is kind of like the, the biggest position you can have in the marching band, um, I did not get it. And the people who did get it were the cool kids who didn't stick around, never lifted a finger, never you know, did any, half the hard work that I did. Um, and that's because politics were at play. And it didn't matter how fucking hard I worked. I wasn't going to get the thing I wanted. And we don't live in a perfect world. And so if you can understand that and understand that even if you work your ass off and do everything properly, you may not get what you want. So if you can be cognizant of that, you can be more aware and then make the things you want to have happen happen. Uh, it's important to realize that just because you're doing the work does not mean you're going to get recognition for doing the work. Uh, one of the programs for my nonprofit I was really, really proud of that I built. And I remember um, doing um, an interview about it and they linked to the wrong website. And I was like, well, that's weird. Well, somebody else had stolen the idea for the program. 
and spun up their own and then taking credit all over these huge, huge, huge news sources nationwide. And it was just heartbreaking for me because the articles were saying things like, oh, well, maybe other cities will start doing this program. And I was like, no, I did it first. This is mine. But just because I built something amazing did not mean I was going to get the credit for it. And so it's important to realize that you do need to do a little bit of self-promotion and you do need to make sure that other people are aware of the work that you are doing because just because you're doing the hard work doesn't mean the world is going to realize that. It was a lot harder for women. We were terrible about bragging about ourselves, which is why, ladies, you got to have your network because we will have your back and we will brag for you. So find your people there. <clears throat> Remove the word should from your vocabulary. This is my least hate, most hated word uh, because this is a fantasy world word. We do not live in a world where everything is as it should be. If the world was as it should be, people wouldn't go hungry. Women wouldn't be sexually harassed. Anybody could marry anybody who they love. Um, so if you are somebody who sees a situation not go your way or you have a struggle and you're like, well, it shouldn't be like that or it should be this way, that's not a productive line of thinking. You really need to reshape your mind and realize that the world is not perfect, but if we take a pragmatic approach, we can still make our dreams come true. So try and as much as you can remove the word should from your vocabulary, except maybe in unit text. It's appropriate there. And finally, um, understand that you are entitled to nothing. We're talking about how to be, you know, badasses and optimize our lives up here. But just because you do all this doesn't mean you deserve certain things. Humility is important. And understanding um, that all, all you really owed at the end of the day is, is decent humanity is really, really important. I see a lot of people get really tied up in wanting something and thinking just because they've done something they deserve. And that's just, again, not the way the world works. And so if you can take a really um, pragmatic and thoughtful approach to this, I think it'll help you um, not get as upset over certain situations. Um, I just can remember so many times in my life where I really, I really worked so hard and there was something I wanted so badly and I knew I worked harder than a lot of the other people that were getting it. But that's the world we live in. And the sooner I realized that, the more happy I've been to figure out how to carve my own path and not get hung up on issues and move forward and make sure that I'm, I'm finding happiness from what I generate. Uh, expect failure because we are not, again, perfect. We are not omnipotent. We're going to fuck up. Uh, the important thing is to not get hung up on it. Failure is part of the process. Failure is in part of improving. Uh, we, we are not all-knowing beings. We're not psychic. We're, we're going to say something wrong. Or we're going to do something wrong. Um, the important thing is learning from your mistakes. Because as long as you're learning and growing, that's all you can ask of yourself. Uh, I know I'm the kind of person that, like, if I make a mistake or I say something or somebody um, takes offense to something I say, it really, really crushes me. But I just have to remind myself, I'm not psychic. And as long as I remember that situation and learn from my mistakes and make sure to try and do better moving forward, that's all I can really do at the end of the day. And finally, we want to make plans to take over the world, right? That's what this talk is about, hacking your work-life blank balance and taking over the world. Um, so to kind of recap the strategies that we talked about, prioritizing, figuring out what and when to do things on our list. Talked about automating ways we can eliminate redundancies in our life so we can spend our time focusing on what we really, really need to. Talked about balancing, making sure we're taking care of our bodies, making sure we're getting enough sleep. <clears throat> Uh, finding tools and using processes that will help us automate and do things better in our life, making sure that we're recompensating, that we're paying ourselves back for all that hard work we're doing, and finally being aware of the way the world is and being pragmatic and making sure that we're working smarter and not harder. Uh, because that's how we're going to get this. That's how we're going to stay in tandem and have this nice, happy work-life blank balance equilibrium uh, that we are all hoping for. That is all I have for you. Um, does anybody have any questions? Is anybody, everybody just too excited for PubConf tonight? Yeah, I hope to see you all there. Um, yes, please do take a photo. The slides are linked here. They will be available. Um, if you enjoyed the, the pre-talk jams, the playlist is there as well, so you can, you can get your groove on. All right, heads down in front so people can take their photos better. 